for part A of the problem, it's actually quite simple. We, for any electric field outside of a uniformly charged sphere, it's as if there is a single charge at the very center of it. So finding the E field of a uniformly charged sphere outside of it just means you're finding the E field of a point charge at the place at the center of the sphere itself. Um, that being said, the we can write the E field equation for R greater than the radius of the square of the sphere to be K Q over R squared, which is just the simple equation of a point charge, the E field of a point charge. And you can now write it also in terms of epsilon naught. So you could say it's four pi epsilon naught R squared. And we're basically done. Let's go ahead and prove it though, just to put our minds at ease. Uh, we could basically say that the E field or Gaussian equi uh, law right here is given as this right here. The integral and closed integral of the E field parallel with a area, infinitesimal area, is equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. Now for the sphere, it's uniformly charged. So a Gaussian curve outside of the sphere of radius, let's just say in this case, radius R naught. If you put a Gaussian curve symmetrically outside the sphere, the E field is going to penetrate that Gaussian sphere uniformly and always perpendicular to the area or parallel to the area vector. So, uh, and also the E field will not change from place to place on this Gaussian sphere. So this DA component is not necessary. Because of the symmetry and because of the fact that the E field always goes parallel with the, um, with the area vector, then we can say that this integral sign becomes EA. We go ahead and say that EA is equal to the Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. And E will then equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught A. Let's go ahead and uh, put in all of the things that we know here. Q enclosed is just going to be the entire Q because the entire sphere with all the Q inside it, all the charge inside it, is within the Gaussian uh, shape. So Q enclosed is simply all of Q. What's the area of this Gaussian circle here or this Gaussian sphere? It's just going to be 4 pi r squared. That's the area of a sphere, uh, the surface area at least. And that ends up being Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared and these two match, which means that it's basically proven. Now let's go ahead and move on to part B, which is a bit more complicated. You're now inside the sphere. You have another Gaussian shape somewhere within and uh, with a radius smaller than R naught. So this is gonna be part B. Now, since the uh, charge is uniform within the sphere, the E field is still going to penetrate perpendicularly to the area vector of, sorry, parallel to the area vector of the Gaussian shape. And it's gonna be uniform, which means it's not gonna change with respect to where on the area of this Gaussian shape the E field penetrates. So therefore, we're gonna go ahead and again, write out the Gauss's law in integral form just to be safe. We're gonna recognize the symmetry and the uh, parallelity between the E field and the area vector. So this ends up being EA. And by the way, when you use Gauss's law, it, most of the times you use it knowing that you'll never have to do this awful integral and you can always simplify it to EA. Otherwise, Gauss's law is gonna be a lot more difficult and you'll need a computer program to do that. So for the most part, you're gonna use Gauss's law knowing that 75% of the time it's gonna reduce down to something as simple as EA for the left term. Let's go ahead and put uh, label E right now. This is for the 
electric field for R less than R naught. So the E of R less than R naught is going to equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught times A. Okay. Now the problem here, the Q enclosed is not going to be the total Q. So you can't just say Q because that's what's given in the problem. That's the entire Q of the, of the sphere, but we're only looking at a fraction of the Q. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and invoke a, um, I hate to say dummy variable, but it's, it's a placeholder variable that is related to Q using, you know, the equation for charge density. So Q uh, using the equation for charge density is just going to be rho times the volume inside this little bit. Now, since the charge on the sphere is uniform, rho is a constant. So no matter where we are in the sphere, rho is rho. And so if you take rho times this tiny volume, you're going to eventually get the Q enclosed in this tiny volume. So therefore, Q enclosed is a rho constant times the volume of that Gaussian sphere. You're going to divide it by epsilon A. And we're going to go ahead and expand it out into appropriate terms. So now we're going to have a uh, row, which is just, again, a constant. Um, the volume of this Gaussian surface is 4 third pi r cubed. Not r naught, but r, because it's the radius of this surface and not the radius of the sphere. And we're going to divide it by epsilon naught times the surface area, which is 4 pi r squared. Let's go ahead and do a few cancellations. So pi's cancel out, four cancels out. R squared cancels out with um, two, two of the three r's on top. And this will end up being rho r over three epsilon naught. Now this would be a pretty satisfying answer, except in the original question, there is no rho. So we're adding in something that wasn't even given to us in the original question. What I want to do is I want to get it back into Q because Q is in the original question. They tell you that Q occupies the entirety of the uniform sphere. So let's go ahead and uh, use rho as a definition to go back to Q. What is the charge density of a uniform sphere? Well, the charge density is going to be the entire charge of the sphere divided by the entire volume of the sphere. So I'm going to just say total, just so we are aware that it's the entire charge divided by the entire volume. Now that's different from the row here. This row, even though they're the same number, this row times volume was given, was taken from just the volume of the Gaussian surface to get the Q enclosed. But now this row is expanded out um, as Q over V of the entire sphere, which is stuff that's known from the original equation. So even though rho is exactly the same, they actually can have many different equations. This, in this case, this rho is Q enclosed over the V of the Gaussian surface. But this rho is the total Q over the total volume of the sphere. But these ratios happen to be the same number, rho. Okay. So anyways, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll go ahead and say, since Q total is really just Q, we're going to say it's QR here, divided by 3 epsilon naught. And then we put the volume total down here. Now, the total volume of the sphere is 4 thirds pi R naught cubed. Do a few more cancellations. We got 3 canceling out with 3 here. And we end up with QR divided by four pi epsilon naught r naught cubed. And that is the final answer to this problem.